donate your stimulus money. Our top political priority over the next two years should be to deny President Obama a second term. Two Corinthians, right? Two Corinthians, 317. That's the whole ballgame. Institutional or systemic racism is racism that is embedded in the laws and regulations of a society or an organization. It manifests as discrimination in areas such as criminal justice, employment, housing, health care, education, and political representation, as well as other areas. By that definition, racism is not isolated. It is pervasive. It is not just regional or national. It is global. We were reminded of the pervasiveness of racism within the last couple of days as we witnessed white Ukrainian authorities mistreat African immigrants seeking to flee the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Writing about it in yesterday's Advocate newspaper, Will Sutton comments, it's hard to ignore the pushing, shoving, and rough handling of people who look like me, Sutton is African American, and people I know. Since the conflict began, there have been reports that Ukraine, Polish, and other officials along Ukraine's borders have refused to allow Africans and other non-Ukrainians to exit the war-torn nation. Some black people have been pulled out of bus and train lines and even pulled off of train cars. Some have had to walk for hours because they couldn't get a ride. Though the racist behavior was blatant, Sutton goes on to express dismay over how it was characterized by white reporters. Listen to Charlie Daggett, a senior correspondent with CBS News, as he reported from Kyiv. With all due respect, um, you know, like Iraq or Afghanistan that has seen conflict raging for decades, you know, this is a relatively civilized uh, relatively European, I have to choose those words carefully too, uh, city where you wouldn't expect that or hope that it's going to happen. It should be unnecessary for him to have done so, but Mr. Sutton does point out to all of us that unfortunately racism exists in lots of places, including Europe. Racism is pervasive. Last year, 26 environmentalists of color signed and published a statement on systemic and pervasive racism within the environmental field. The subtopic reads, people of African descent in Africa, the United States, and Europe are undermined by white supremacy within the environmental field. The statement reads in part, the world is currently grappling with two pandemics. One has recently emerged, the other has raged for centuries. As we ascertain the damage of coronavirus to our health and economies, we are also reeling at the reality of racism and social injustice, which is killing black people and sabotaging our potential. This is called for honest conversations and action to dismantle systemic racism, not just in America, but across the world. As a collective of black environmental leaders, we are demanding an end to the casual acceptance of white supremacy within the environmental field. Systemic racism exists within the interplay of the attitudes of environmental organizations and their staff. Within the negative narratives and messaging about black people and our relationship with nature, within the imposition of conservation models, in the disregard of our knowledge systems, within disparities in access and rights to land, within nature-related health disparities and environmental justice, within a lack of access to funding which impedes our voices being heard and methods being implemented, and within exploitative partnerships which serve to tick boxes and manage a continued dominance. There needs to be acknowledgement of the historical and current injustices within the environmental field, which are rooted in a history of eugenics and white supremacy that has deliberately and systematically excluded black people from nature and the environmental field, leading in some instances to the greater harm of disenfranchisement from nature and a loss of knowledge and relationship with the natural world. Racism is pervasive. It raises its head in our perspective on science. Terence Keel, associate professor with a joint appointment in the African American Studies Department and the UCLA Institute for Society and Genetics, speaks of how this is so. 
Scientists say they are working from facts, but their questions are based on the traditions from which they come. Those traditions dictate the way they analyze data and influence their answers, especially on issues of race. Keel adds, you may miss significant social and political factors if you are still looking for racial commonalities. Racism is pervasive. It affects every aspect of our lives. And the question is not, does it really exist? But why do not white theologians speak out more against it from the perspective of Christian love and affirmation of all people in the model of Christ? James Cone offers an answer. Fighting for racial justice in the 1960s was the church's finest hour. But now, having confronted it years ago, they think they have made the racial situation better, whereas in some ways it is worse. It is like a new form of racism in that it accepts the tokenism of a few blacks in churches, educational institutions, and government in order to make people think everything is fine on the racial front. But just look at the statistics about the African-American community with regard to imprisonment, health care, education, and employment. We are worse off today in areas like these. So I want to challenge white theologians and their churches to speak out in a sustained and prophetic way about racial injustice. There are multiple other examples that I could cite, but I believe that the point has been made. Racism is pervasive. Racism is harmful, both to the oppressed and the oppressors. We must pray that the church reclaim its spiritual and moral authority by practicing a Jesus love to combat the pervasiveness of racism. Lord God, your word affirms that you are no respecter of persons, that if we are in Christ, there is no male or female, slave or free, native or foreigner, that in you we are all one. Yet we live in a world and among people who make clear distinctions between us. We live in a land where these distinctions are codified in laws, principles, practices, guidelines, and the like. So we pause this evening to pray that your Holy Spirit will prevail in the minds and the hearts of these your people, that they may think and act in accordance with your will. Let equity prevail in every facet of our lives, for it is only as equity prevails that we are able to make true progress. Remind us that there is no peace that is built on untruths or half-truths, only the temporary cessation of hostility. We desire more than that, Lord. Lead us into more than that, so that our prayers and supplications may be in accordance with your will and in line with your desires. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to feel, feet to move, hands to work, and tongues to speak your truth, even when it is unpopular or undesired. We ask in the name of your son, Jesus, who is our Christ. Amen.